Yes, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I I want to say happy new month to all of you. Uh, this is uh, something that is very common here in Nigeria to greet people happy new months. We greet for everything here, which is amazing. So we're in Abuja, and I just uh, want to thank all of you for exercising patience uh, with us. Uh, we've been in Abuja for almost four days now and having all kinds of discussions to bring together all the big, I mean, all the major fresh candidates, uh, sorry, aspirants in the race for the presidency. We just cannot afford to continue um, recycling the old people that uh, brought Nigeria to the horrible condition that it is today, uh, such that this coalition or organization became very necessary. So. Uh, I want to make sure that I have a short broadcast this morning, as short as possible, to address all of your questions or issues regarding this, so that nobody's in doubt or nobody's in the dark regarding what we are doing and what is happening. And also, thank you once again for the patience you've been having with us. We had to postpone the declaration of our party due to the coalition conversations that have been taking place. So yesterday, starting from there before yesterday, I uh, had a good meeting with uh, Matai Asado, and uh, that was followed. He was also with uh, Thomas Wilson, a Kubese doctor. So we met and uh, fashioned out an agenda for a meeting that, uh, an enlargement that took place yesterday. And in that meeting, as you saw, uh, Kingsley Mogalu could not attend the earlier one, so he sent a rep and Kaladro uh, Toye was there. Uh, Alistair Soya, the owner of Ben TV in the UK, was also in attendance. Jaye Gaskia uh, and um, I think Elishama was there. Shino uh, Fag Baby Byron was there. About 14 presidential candidates, including Topwe Fashu of ANRP. They were all there. Ahmed Buhari, uh, all of them attended. Uh, Jimbo was there. So the intention was to just make sure that we bring all these guys together so that we can start speaking the same language. And we also understood quite clearly that uh, a lot of you uh, supporters want to see some kind of synergy. So, so we, we had this uh, amazing meeting, and I'm, I'm glad to report to you that it went very well. Uh, we have not made any decision as to who will be carrying the flag uh, for that particular coalition. But uh, rest assured that uh, nothing will be done to compromise your interests, our interests. Uh, our interest is to ensure that Nigeria is put on a path of uh, glory and progress and the real development come 20. 19 and that we don't make any mistake whatsoever uh, to re-elect the criminals that brought Nigeria to its knees right now and as you have seen uh, as I mentioned and said to you uh, maybe predicted accurately right that uh, the APC machine uh, had imploded and it was going to be exploding in clusters thank you uh, it's happening already one of the major thieves in APC just uh, left the party. Saraki has uh, left, and several other thieves are abandoning uh, the sinking ship of uh, APC. But don't make any mistake uh, to believe that because they have left the APC, they have become born again politicians or they are going to change their ways. No, they are used to stealing and they can never stop stealing, and they are just distracting our attention by jumping from one party to the other. These are people I call carpet baggers. Uh, they will move to wherever it is that can protect their personal interests against your interests. They are not interested in development of Nigeria. They are not interested in making our country a great country. They are interested in plundering and pillaging Nigeria to the point that Nigeria is only existing right now on paper. Nigeria is indebted to several billions of uh, naira, if not dollars, uh, well, dollars at this point, and we have nothing to show for it. 
our roads are bad, we don't have schools, our hospitals are broken. Uh, in Abuja here, except from the areas where the rich people live, you have no electricity, you don't have roads, there's no water. We travel extensively around the northern part of Nigeria, and I tell you this, they have destroyed everywhere, including the north. But they love the way the north is because the way the north is now is a place that you can't contest with them. Everybody is scared to go to the north because they've ruined the north. There was a systematic destruction, impoverization of the north in such a way that it has become a fertile ground for their kind of ideology of underdevelopment. Nigeria is in a state of arrested development. Any attempt to develop the country, people who are not interested in the development of the country will come after you. But we must stop that, and that's why we are here in Abuja today. Uh, I'll be leaving very soon for Lagos to have this very strong meeting. And we also made a decision at the meeting we had yesterday at uh, the home of Area Father Charlie Boy to challenge INEC's uh, decision to stop registration of voters on, in August. Our position is that the registration of voters should be allowed to continue so that as many voters as are willing, whether they are disgruntled or not, should be allowed to pick up their voters, uh, voters card and vote for a can the candidate of their choice. A lot of people believe that INEC has an agenda, uh, so there's going to be some kind of movement and advocacy and mobilization, even protests regarding that uh, decision so that we can have an extension of the registration of voters. Over 10 million vote, new voters have uh, registered. Uh, within this number, though, there's a low collection rate. Only about um, 588,000 people have collected their PVCs. That's not good for the kind of uh, electoral progress we are looking for in the next election. We want to really, really not only contest this election, we want to disgrace these people out of power. They have done their worst, and uh, we cannot wait to get them out of the way. And nobody should be under any illusion that any one of them, whether they're in APC or PDP, whether they retain their current name or they change their name. I heard AP, uh, PDP is trying to change its name. I don't know where they are going to change their name to. They should call themselves what they are, Association of Thieves, you know, uh, that's AT. Association of Chiefs Congress or, or party. How are you? Good morning. I'm uh, doing a live broadcast. So thank you so much for running to me. You are trying to photobomb me. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Uh, one of our crew members who, uh, who is getting ready. And uh, later today, I think in about 30 minutes, I'll be on a Kiss FM in Abuja. So you can call into that program. Talk about so many of the things we are doing. But as you can see, there's fantastic momentum. We're back and doing what we know how to do best, organizing because we have to stop agonizing so that we can take a decision to bring these guys down and take them out of our social political system and bring social justice to bear on the nation of Nigeria so that Nigeria can witness progress and development. You understand? The only way we can do it is to bond together and vote the old wicked leaders out of power in Nigeria. Uh, I don't know what is happening uh, in Zimbabwe, but they were supposed to have an election where a young person, they realized, even uh, Mugabe finally realized that uh, Zimbabwe is in need of uh, young blood because as an old person, he almost dragged the country down with him. That is what they are trying to do in Nigeria. They want to drag Nigeria into the grave with them. But we are not going to allow that to happen. That's why I'm appealing to you, young people. Do not be afraid. You have nothing to lose. Let's bond together. Let's chase the crazy bird heads out of town, like Bob Marley would say. They are reorganizing now. They are regrouping. And they will tell you that some of them have integrity. It's a lie. There's no man with integrity in any of these two political parties. Uh, and that's why you see the PDP has been running around apologizing to people that they knew that they did what is wrong. Some of them even openly you know, admitted that they have been rigging elections and buying votes in this country. Uh, and they still want us, regardless of that, to accept them you know, uh, with another 
promotion. They want another social promotion so that they can finally finish this country. We are saying no to that. And we are saying no to PDP. We are saying no to the APC or AP cheats as they call them. There is no way in life we will accept the continuation of the ruination of the nation of Nigeria. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. And we are organized now. I met with all these young, uh, all these young uh, presidential aspirants yesterday. And I made it clear to them that just beyond just the meeting or holding hands, we have to own the streets. We have to organize in such a way that we own every block. And that's what we have been doing at Take It Back. We are everywhere. We've been to every part of Nigeria. As of yesterday, we have done, I think, about 26 to 27 states visitation. I've done countless radio shows, TV shows. Uh, we've been to places like Zamfara where there's been massive killings going on and nothing is happening. But what we detected and discovered on our way there, there's no governance in those areas. We rarely saw policemen. A place like Zamfara, which has become Nigeria's killing field, you would have expected police to be fanning left, right, and center. We didn't see no policemen in Zamfara. We drove hours inside Zamfara. Maybe we saw maybe only one police uh, patrol van. You know. In fact, we didn't see the kind of security architecture we saw in the south. Don't exist in the north, even though the north is uh, currently under uh, some security. It's undergoing several challenges security-wise. Uh, we've not been to Borno, maybe that would be different, but we traveled from Kano by land to through Casina. Uh, that's President Buhari's hometown uh, and home state. We went from there, uh, from Casina, we went to Zamfara. From Zamfara, we went to Kebi. In Kebi, we visited Bini Kebi and Agungu. Uh, Agungu is the place where they used to have the fishing festival. The place is broken right now. You can't even recognize the place. I mean, Nigerian leaders are wicked. So we spoke to the villagers there before we proceeded to Shokoto. And we didn't see any development happening there. Uh, that shows that uh, one of their own, as they like to claim, is in power. Nothing, nothing to show for it. And what is interesting is that they have uh, tried to mentally block people from down south uh, from approaching uh, uh, the north, creating the fear that northerners don't want progress and they don't want to see southerners. It's a lie. When we go to those places, the kind of acceptance, uh, acceptance and reception we got was very, very impressive. Really, really impressive. Uh, we just hope that uh, all of you are watching us and you are watching these moves. And you understand that Nigerians all over the country are united this time around to bring about a different level of governance that will unite all of them, that will bring progress, that will bring prosperity, and most importantly, peace to this land. Uh, this land is crying. There's hunger in the land. There's starvation in the land. There's organized robbery of uh, the treasury in the land. There's organized neglect of uh, our people. There's organized abuse of uh, Nigerians. There's organized misgovernance uh, in a misogynistic way that is happening and it's been orchestrated and organized by these old politicians. Some of them have been around since 1960. I mean, what else do you want from a country? You know, look at President Buhari, for example. He started receiving salary from Nigeria at the age of maybe 14 as a soldier. He registered in the army around nobody knows when, you know. And ever since then, this man has been collecting from Nigeria, receiving from Nigeria. Everything he wanted is paid for by Nigeria. His health is paid for by Nigeria. His airplane is paid for by Nigeria. His retirement is paid for by Nigeria. His health care is paid for Nigeria. Education paid for by Nigeria. Even when his kids fall off bicycles, Nigeria has to pay for it. And this man is not even kind enough to say, look, you know, I have mismanaged Nigeria. Nigeria has been so kind to me, but, well, I haven't done too well for Nigeria. I'm going to not let Nigerians organize themselves and, you know, just uh, move out of this darkness or wilderness, as they call it. We have to get out of this wilderness, you know, since uh, several of them are entering into wilderness, 
uh, and climbing on top of treetops. Uh, we have to let them keep running to the bush while we find our way into a nation that is accepting, that is uh, able to support our aspirations for uh, a future that is comparable with anywhere in the world. So I want you to share this video. I'm going to uh, take some questions. I'm looking at your questions. I haven't found any yet. Uh, just, uh, just let's uh, let's take some of your questions. If you have any questions, Nigeria will be great. It will be great. Now we're going to make Nigeria great in our lifetime. We cannot continue to recycle the people who destroyed Nigeria. I cannot understand it, people. I can't understand those of you, young people, or not even young whomever you are, who has seen the destruction wrought upon this country in the last 58 years, and you say to yourself, you wake up, you look at yourself, today is the first day in the month of uh, August, and you look at yourself and you say, the only way this country can continue, this country can continue, is to vote back into power the same people that have destroyed the country. And, you know, you have to just search your conscience, people. You have to, this is the time for you all to search your conscience especially those of you who knowingly, knowingly uh, are supportive of this. We can understand those who might have made a mistake in the past, you know, who genuinely thought that uh, uh, these guys could make a difference. By now, you know, you, you know what they are capable of doing. And you're saying that the best way to go forward is to put the country in a reverse gear. Uh, that's not fair, and we must challenge you and continue to challenge you, yes. Yeah, someone is asking me why am I not in already this morning. Uh, this coalition became so important that we had to stay in Abuja to make it work. Already, is, uh, I'm with you guys in already, and I hope I can find my way there still, but uh, it's looking unlikely. Already, is, is experiencing a protest today in Ondo State. The people of uh, the Southern Senatorial District of Ondo State have not had electricity for close to 15 years. I'm talking about places like Okitibupa, Ibokoda, Odei, really, and Ilaje, Eseldo, Ikale, they've not had electricity for 15 years. And look at it. There are people still in that place who are rooting for Buhari in Ondo State. There are people who are rooting for the people who took electricity away from them. It's been three years since President Buhari came to office. If he has not been able to provide you electricity in three years and you are supporting him, Maybe, I don't know what to say to you. So, I support you guys, and uh, you have my support in your protest in Odeo, in Ore, in Ondo State today. Uh, as they say, you can make it Oleku in Jaore, so that they bring you back electricity. You deserve it, you deserve light. And don't go back until you, you get your light back. Take it back. Uh, what would you do to the brave soldiers that exposed the Kitty election? The, bro the brave soldier that exposed the Kitty election has actually been doing well. He's uh, right now in the UK doing his PhD. Uh, that's Captain Coley. He was uh, promoted after we made that exposure. And after that, he went to the UK to have his master's. He contacted me. He did very well in his master's. At, uh, I think he came out with, uh, uh, with distinction in his master's and uh, he was immediately uh, admitted to do his PhD. So Captain Coley is doing well. Captain Coley who exposed a kitty election uh, rigging in 2014 is doing very well. Ekiti, yes, we're we'll coming to Ekiti very soon. Um, so, point I'm making to you all is uh, our party will be announced uh, August 15. That's it, this time. Nothing can change that date. What can I do to make Nigeria better if I'm made president? I've said this several times. You can check our manifesto on showre2019.org. It's self-explanatory and it's broken down in long and short pieces. Are we joining the existing parties <laughs> or forming a new one? You'll find out soon. You'll find out. But I'm sure you'll like whatever we decide on August 15th on or before that date. Take it back, people.
to a coalition of uh, what would you still do? The coalition of young presidential candidate is not a political party. Uh, it's a, it's, we actually called it uh, presidential aspirants coming together. So nothing has been done, or nothing has conferred any power on the organization to select a presidential candidate. We said we will present a united front. That's so you're very clear about that. United front is not the same thing as selecting. As a matter of fact, when I was at the first meeting yesterday, I decided I'm not joining any coalition as a body. Because I don't want to wake up one day and find out that the coalition that I'm part of has gone to submit itself to another coalition of thieves or uh, very miserable people, or people who are making Nigerians miserable. The Nigerian power issue, we've discussed it several times, is about bringing energy mixes together, uh, solar, hydro, gas, coal, where possible, and to increase it seriously, uh, not marginally, from 7,000 miserable uh, giga sofa, or giga darkness, as, as I want to call it, uh, to about 24,000. Uh, gigawatts of electricity very quickly. We have to increase you know, our, our capacity generation, then transmission and uh, distribution quickly. Will I create a seaport in Lagos, uh, in Ondo State? We're planning to not create, we'll, there are seaports in Calabar, we have in Wari and several places. But for some reason we are not using them because some people are interested in keeping Lagos as the only seaport. So we'll create seaport wherever we need it. It's not rocket science. It's, that's why I say to you that, uh, you know, Nigeria doesn't have a problem as much as the leader has been a problem to Nigeria. How will you restructure the system in such a way that the tenure there will be continuity of good governance? Uh, well, it, what we start the restructuring is this election. We have to restructure Nigeria to the people for whom the restructuring all of us are talking about is needed. You cannot restructure Nigeria between now and the election if you don't take the first step in restructuring, which is to vote for a credible candidate that is capable of running Nigeria. Oh no, somebody saying that I won't be forced. No, nobody can force me to uh, do what uh, is not right. Are you still coming to Crawford University? Yes. He said, can you step down for Kinsley Mogalu? Kinsley has not even mentioned that, that he's looking for somebody to step down for. We are having a united front, right? So who we win the election is the person who can who we will step down for is the person who can win the election who has the capacity to win the election who can gain the trust of everyone in nigeria so we haven't reached that point yet and nobody should worry about that somebody is asking me to do something about my big belly oh my goodness <laughs> I invite you to a run, man. I just need to exercise more. I agree with you. Apple belly must go. Yes, but you need a little bit of big belly in Nigeria so that people can trust you. Uh, See, you know, go, go there, go chop on it. No, just kidding. Yes, now walk on my belly. Join a party August 15. Are you coming to California? Yes. I think uh, in August or September we'll be in California. When are you coming to Manchester? Manchester, we need to uh, reorganize. We'll be back there soon. soon. Uh, I don't have a date right now, but yes. The moment we choose a party, we'll be back in the UK. You know, uh, you guys in the UK, you should clap for yourselves. You've been really, we have the strongest, one of the strongest bases we have is based in the UK. And of course in the US. But mostly in Europe, Spain and Germany. My goodness, you guys in Spain, they have the hope. Thank <laughs> you.
We'll see what happens uh, from tomorrow in South Africa. If they use mobile police, not be, mobile, not be human being, be mobile police. Don't be afraid of police, please. This election, you know, we are meeting policemen even on the road who have joined us. We are meeting soldiers who have joined us. Don't worry about their use of mobile police. Share this video. When I reach 500 people watching this video, I will stop. If not, I won't stop. Oh. <laughs> yes, we have to <laughs> just share the video. If you reach 500, we reach 500, 500, 500. We need six more, six more, 500, six more. They don't want me to stop. People are logging up. <laughs> we need six more. So share this video. We reach 500. When we reach 500, we will stop. When we reach 500, we will stop. When we reach 500, we will stop. Share this video. Keep sharing the video. When we reach 500, it's 494 now. 490. Come on. I think we got to go. No, it's 495 now. 497. 497. Share this video. 504. 504. We got the votes. We, we got more than the votes we needed <laughs> to win this election. <laughs> All the guys here just started logging in. I found out they were not watching. <laughs> No, I know. I was just, uh, all right, people, thank you so much. We had five or seven people actively watching us. It's encouraging this morning. I want to say uh, happy new month to all of you. Again, it's 5.13, by the way. My goodness. Uh, happy new month to all of you uh, all this August. We're heading to uh, South Africa this night. So we'll be in Joburg starting from tomorrow. We'll be in Cape Town. And uh, after that, we'll be back in Nigeria preparatory to announcing our political party platform. Once again, I want to thank you so much for watching our broadcast this morning on Take It Back. I want to urge you guys to take it back. And thank you to all of the presidential aspirants uh, that met with us yesterday. Again, continue to show them love. You know, no acrimony, uh, no need to uh, fight ourselves. We should present a united front. I'm going to work with all these guys. A lot of them are great guys, uh, you know, very nice guys. Uh, fella pretty cool. Uh, Mogalu, I met Mogalu before. Nice guy. Tokwe uh, Fashua. Uh, 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 yes. Yes, Tokwe Fashua, uh, leader of ANRP. Great guy. Uh, I met Alicia Shino, uh, Fagwemi Byron, uh, Jaye Gastia. A lot of great guys. So, I want to say thank you again, and uh, I'm going to take a break now. We're going to Kisa FM in Abuja. We'll be there in a few minutes, and uh, hope to rejoin you again as soon as possible. Have a nice day. Again, happy new August. Take care.